Okay, so I, I already wired up my two door triggers. This vehicle had separate door triggers for the drivers and the passengers. I did not actually videotape the actual physical wiring because it was too painful. I mean, it's like you got a really good port to get up into that body control module. Grab those two wires and it's impossible to, to even see. So, take my word for it, they are done. My back knows that they were done all too well. So, ha the way I did it is this. I turned the key to the on position, so that way the dome light would turn off instantly as soon as I latched the door. So I just took my hook tool, stuck it in the latch. Actually, I had an assistant do that while I was underneath there probing the wires, so that way I was looking for the wire to be ground, and once the latch was clicked in, the wire would either go to nothing or show voltage, so I knew I had the driver door. Then we repeated the procedure for the passenger door. Once I got those two together, I just simply made my two connections at the alarm system, and that's it. So moving along, all I got now left to do is my power window module, which is the last test on the treat that's going to be fun to do, and uh, my blade. My blade calls for one wire to be connected here at the OBD2 connector, my diagnostic connector. It says it's pin 2 on the top left, second over from the top, which is that violet colored wire. All you have to do is just go by this. This is, this is your gospel. If it says to do this, do exactly that. After that's completed, do the programming procedure. There's an LED right on the main module, as you see right here, which tells you when it when it's completely programmed. There is a program button on there if you're just wondering what it was. There is one here. And right now you can see it's in red because it's not learned, but after I'm done, I will program it. That baby's gonna go green, and this thing's gonna be ready to okay, rock. Okay, so I'm gonna program the blade right now. It says to close the door. You open it to wake up the car's um, data bus. Then it says take the key, turn it into the ignition. Turn it to the on position, wait for the LED on the module to turn green, which it is not going to do, and it says, and if after 5 seconds the LED did not turn on solid green, press the programming button once, so, there you Off go. comes the dwarfs. I can get the, the driver, I mean the passenger, window up and down in the in the driver door boot right here but there's no way I'm gonna get the drive the driver's door because you know it's just how this car is some cars are better in that respect like Volkswagen and Audis and stuff because they have the switches in the center of the console which do all the windows GM is <coughs> not quite like that I'm just going to keep all my hardware in one place. Underneath here there's a couple of torques. I'm just going to use this hex wrench instead because I don't have my torque set. It wakes. last section, I'm going to be wiring up these power window module. I thought that I can grab the two uh, wires right here in the driver boot using the length of the uh, module itself. However, it turned out that only the unlock wire is there because the driver is only accessible right here in the driver door just because this car is, is a coupe. So uh, I know that my window colors are dark blue and light blue, so that's pretty easy. And these are just a standard rever reversal arrested ground window circuit. So it's basically as straightforward as just running two pairs of heavy gauge uh, cables in through the door, uh, connecting them here, and just, you know, basically five wiring these two. Just cut them in half and then just putting them in line. 
of the circuit, which you'll see if you're not sure what that means. I'll be sure to explain everything to you. Now, it's your job and duty to figure out how you can get your wires through your, your driver's door boot. Some cars um, have Molex connectors, which are really tough, which are hard plastic -y. You know, they're shaped like squares, rectangles sometimes, and they're just a real nightmare. And, you know, they're right in here, and it's literally impossible to just push, the, push them through and get something as heavy as, as these wires through them. Um, if you have a Molex connector, I feel for you because they're no fun. This car here just basically has this big old rubber boot, and it's really, it's a joke to do. I mean, I could just, you know, get them through the um, insulation on the side of this door boot. And all you got to do is just push out of your way. Grab your wires, bring it, on, bring it on through from one side of the driver's door boot through the other. Put them back so that way, of course, everything is wa waterproof and watertight. So in that respect, I'm very grateful this, this job is going to go very easy in that, in that respect. So, re I mean, everything about it is really easy. Um, the wiring type is very straightforward. The actual work is, is pretty easy. I mean, the only thing that really sucked about it was having to take the door panel off, you know, but that's that's not even the end of the world. I mean, I've had much harder cars than that. So, all in all, it'll be cool. And when you see this, this thing done in action, it's so worth it. Because these windows are so, so cool. I mean, especially the way this, this one's wired up. So, it, so that way, when you walk around the car and the proximity picks it up, it locks the doors and rolls the windows up on you. That's just a really cool, that's a sweet feature. That's unique. That is a really cool custom feature. I can hardly wait to get this thing done and play with it. I also wonder why is it that other people have features in their rooms that I don't have in my own? Why is that? Okay, so anyway. Got these guys through. The next part, get it in through the door jam. Again, pretty darn easy. Now, I want to test that they're not interfering with anything in this car. That's super important. Take a, a nice moment to watch how this door performs. It's also important to watch how the windows act, the speed, if if they get tight like that, because it's easy to, to blame everything on yourself after the job is done, but it's nice to see it beforehand so that way you can remember if you saw something screwy before you got started on the job. Now this car's got a couple little quirks, but nothing too bad. Now another thing is, when you're doing power windows, make sure, you know, if I'm using, I'm guessing that these here are like 14 gauge wires, I'm going a little crazy with 12 gauge, but understand that when you are lengthening these wires from the factory switch to the motors, going around and around through my power window module, I'm forcing those wires to go around another 5, 6 feet, whatever this is. Um, so to compensate for the voltage loss, make it up in, in the uh, size of the gauge wiring that you use in the vehicle. The wiring costs you more, so be it. Like I always say, it's cheaper to do things right the first way, the first time. So now I'm exactly where I need to be. I'm going to cut off the excess. I'm going to show you how we integrate with these motor wires. Now I am using an Omega system, and I'm using an Omega AU93, which is a two-window window module. And luckily for, for me, Omega gives you printed schematics on how to wire up their window modules. They're, they're actually the only company that actually does without you even asking, which is why I always tell everybody to use Omega products. And I actually called them today for an unassociated issue with my um, proximity sensor to work with my power windows because when I wired it up, I noticed that when the alarm was disarmed that the, that the sensor was still staying on and clicking my window module wanting this making this thing go up up and down without me even wanting it to. And I called them up and literally it took about 
three minutes, guy says, just connect your ground to your sensor through your starter kill, so that way it only works when the system's on. Problem solved. I mean, that's, that's what you want. You want a company that helps their customers, should you need it. And even me, you, you know, you say, hey, well, this guy, he knows everything. He's Mr. Guru, you know, Carl on. Why does he have to call anybody? But, you know, even me, sometimes I get a brain fart here and there. And it's nice to have somebody to call and chit-chat with. So that's the reason why I tell you guys to use the certain products that I use. Not because I get paid, not because I'm on the payroll for these companies. It's because I care about you. And I want to give you good, straight information. So I'm using these heavy yellow butt connectors. Which are 12 gauge. So they'll work out really nicely. Okay. So Here's that sheet that I was telling you about Omega. Omega gives it to you. And you got here white to switch side. And brown to the switch side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go. I'm going to put the copper to the switch side on mine. And I'll figure it out on the other side. Switch side, switch side, switch side. So. Okay. On one, on one of them. Well, I'll just do them both to the switch side and I'll figure it out the other half when I get into the uh, underdash. And it's important that you do stuff like that because if you're going to work here and know that one side of the circuit has to go to the switch side, make sure you know exactly what it's supposed to be inside the car because it's so easy to forget. But if you come up with a plan, things will go a lot easier for you and a lot quicker. You know, sometimes you just get excited and you just want to get things done. but. Again, switch side, I'm going to stick with my copper. Nice tight crimp. There you go. So these things are all in there. And since I'm in a, a driver door, I'm going to take the extra step. I wouldn't normally do this underneath the dashboard. However, water is always a problem in door jams, even in the best of them. So I'm going to take an extra second. I'm going to insulate every one of these connectors and wires. Just to, just to safeguard the, the longevity of this work that I'm doing here. And I definitely suggest if you ever do a window module and you have to go into the, to the doors, to take that second and do it yourself. Okay, so. Both of these switches are open circuits right now, so neither should work until I connect them to the other side through the uh, window module, then it'll become complete circuits once again. But for right now, I'm not going to put this door jam together. I'm not going to do anything. Only thing I'm going to do is just kind of throw a couple wire ties on there just to keep everything nice, nice for the time being. <laughs> 